emergency plan we can ever have. Uh, and that otherwise everything is temporary. And uh, I would like for all you guys to, to work your permanency plan so I can all see you up there with me and all of us. And I know you can do it because God's changed me. And if he can change me, he can do anything for you guys. Amen. 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 Oh, and one thing, what are you supposed to do? Invite somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning, Michael and Dina. Hallelujah. Good morning, sir. Good morning to Greg and Mercedes. The good morning. Our brother Harold this morning, hallelujah. Our good brother here, our brother's over here, Reuben. Raise your hand, Reuben. Everybody welcome Reuben, hallelujah. Reuben, how long, how many days without drinking? How many hours, how many minutes? Seven days. Seven days, all right. Hallelujah. Hi, Reuben. <laughs> some, of, some of you got seven minutes, some of you got seven hours, some of you got seven days, some of you got seven uh, weeks, hallelujah, some of you got seven years, amen, hallelujah, 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 we're here to help you along in your recovery, God loves you and God loves us, hallelujah, uh, we're so grateful, Michael and Dina are going to be getting married here pretty soon, hallelujah, yes. Amen. Let's open with a word of prayer and let's jump right into our word today. Hallelujah. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to pray before we get started. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for Pastor John today. We just lift him up to you, Lord God. We just bless him in Jesus' name. We thank you for your anointing upon him, Lord. We thank you that the words he speaks are not his words, they're your words, Lord God. And uh, Lord, just Holy Spirit, just drive him like a nail right into our hearts, Lord God. Yeah, we receive that word and embrace it and it becomes a strong peg in our hearts that we can just hang our faith on in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. We want to welcome everybody this morning. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, having the mind of Christ. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Well, let me just say it to you like this church. You can't have you can't have the mind of Christ until you have the spirit of Christ in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You've got to realize that God has called us to a higher level in our lives. Man, let me just tell you something. This is so powerful because I want you to realize, amen, that you, got, you can't do better until you know better. Let me say it one more time. You can't do better until you know better. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Or neighbor. neighbor. You look good this morning, neighbor. Good good morning. But I want you to know that you can't do better until you know better. Now look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor. 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 You look good this morning, neighbor. But I want you to know one thing. Watch you know one thing. You can't do better. Can't do no better. Until you know better. Until you know better. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering today. Hallelujah. Come on. Why do we come to church? We come to church so we can learn about God. So we can learn about salvation. So we can learn about this great peace. So we can learn about this great deliverance. So we can learn what it is to walk right. So we can learn what it is to talk right. So what we can learn what it is to be right. So we can learn what it is to act right. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. And God is the one who fills us with his Holy Spirit and enables us from the inside to be better than we used to be. Now, I used to have a friend in Riverside, and, he, and I would say, man, how are you doing this morning, brother? He'd come to church, and he was an old drunk and an old dope feed. And he'd come to church in the morning, and he'd be sober like Reuben, sober like Reuben. And he would go through these challenges where he would fall back in, and then he would, he would he'd get sober again. And every once in a while, he'd slip back, and then he'd come back out of it. And I would ask him in the morning at church time, I'd say, how are you doing this morning, brother? And he'd say, Pastor... Oh, pastor, he'd say, that. <laughs> he'd say, pastor, he says, I'm not going to lie to you, pastor. I can't lie to the man of God. He says, I'm not as good as I should be. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you got to be better than you should be. Come on. He says to me, pastor, I can't lie. He says, I'm not as good as I should be. Then he looks and he says, pastor, I really can't lie. And he says, I'm not even as good as I could be. Come on, somebody. I'm not even as good as I could be. He says, 
But pastor, I need to let you know, thank God Almighty, I'm better than I used to be. Let the church say amen. 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 Yeah, I'm not as good as I should be. I'm not as good as I could be, but I'm better, better than, than I used, used to be. To let be. the church say amen, somebody. Amen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this morning, as we get into this word, listen, what are we here for this morning? I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to tickle your ears this morning. I'm here to give you uh, some knowledge. Hallelujah. I'm here to give you uh, 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 a hand up. Amen. Not a hand out, but a hand up out of your situation. That's what the Word of God does. The Word of God is power. The Word of God is deliverance. The Word of God makes a way where there is no way. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to realize something about people. People are like tea bags. Listen. People are like tea bags. You get them in a little hot water, you find out real fast what comes comes out of them. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> People are like tea bags. You get them in a little hot water and you find out what comes out of them. Wow. It used to be, listen, it used to be when I first got saved, listen, when I first got saved when I was a young man and somebody would rub me the wrong way that the old man wanted to come out of me. The old John wanted to come out. Amen. Amen. People ask me when they see me around here in the mornings, Pastor, why do you go jogging every day in the morning? And I tell them, well, because I live here in the hood. Come on, somebody. I live here in the hood. And from the way I grew up and the way I was raised was you need to be in better shape than the other guy because when it gets down to it, you need to be the one who walks away. And the other person will be like, oh, let me help you up, sir. Let me help you up off the ground. Amen. So I exercise because that's the that's something that I learned. I was trained up in that way to do those things. Amen? Now here's what happens. It took a while for me to learn how to respond like Jesus rather than the old me. It took a while for me to learn how to respond like Jesus rather than the old me. The old me, if you got in my face and started saying all kind talking all kinds of crazy talk, I was gonna be helping you get up off the ground in a minute. Come on, somebody. <laughs> But the new me, but the new me, the Jesus me says, hey man, I know that you're hurt. I know that you've been through this, some things, but I love Jesus and I just want you to love Jesus. Let me give you some, come on, let's pray. Amen. So the new me gives everybody Jesus. The old me wanted to give everybody the old John. Come on, somebody. Amen. So here's why we come to church. We come to church to get educated. This is Bible school right here. This is Bible school. We come to get educated in the things of God, not so we can keep being the old us, but so that we can be like Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we talk about this this morning, listen to this. This is important for you to understand. This is why we hand out free Bibles. This is why we pray. This is why we sing together, hallelujah. So that the Spirit of God can come in and begin to teach us all things. The Bible says he's the teacher of all things. He reminds us of all things. He teaches us and, re and brings all things to remembrance. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are here to get the education and learn about how to walk this thing out with God. You know why? Because I don't want to be the old me anymore. I'm tired of being bu broke. I'm tired of being busted. I'm tired of being disgusted. I'm tired of being wrecked up from the neck up. I'm tired of being broke from the feet. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of doing all those things. I need something new in my life, and I need it now. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you know that he's a life-giving God? Yes. We did all those things in the world and those were old, those were old dead things. Hanging around old dead people, right. doing old dead things on the corner of 4th Street and 6th Street. Come on somebody, we did hung out with dead people. Jesus talks yeah. about the man at the tombs. Amen, he came to him and this man made his home among the tombs, among, among the dead people, among the dead things. And this is what Jesus did. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, Jesus didn't come to make you a goody two shoes. Yeah, listen to me carefully, church. Jesus didn't come to make bad people be good people. Jesus came to make dead people be alive people. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, come on. Put your hand over your heart and say, I'm alive, I'm alive. In, Christ in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm, alive. I'm alive in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Come on, give a little hand up, Lord, a clan clap. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. All right, Luke chapter 46. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. When you're there, say amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, now bear with me. I have been. Uh, I don't know if you guys joined us on Bible study on Friday night. 
But, you know, when you spend time with Jesus in the Word, the Holy Spirit just jumps all over you. And Friday night at Bible study, I could not stop crying almost through the whole study. I was crying during the worship. I was crying in the Bible study. I had tears. It was like I sprung a leak and tears were pouring out of me. And so what happens with us is, is the more you get into the Word of God, the more you spend time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you spend time in His Word, amen, what's on Him gets on you. Hallelujah. The holiness, the power, the deliverance, the mercy, the peace, the goodness of God jumps all over you. And man, and sometimes, I don't know about you, but man, when I feel the power of the Holy Spirit come on me, man, I can't keep my eyes dry. It's like I sprung a leak. Water starts coming out of my face like crazy. So you'll have to forgive me this morning because when I was studying this word, man, I was just spending time with Jesus. I was spending time in the word. I was spending time in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was giving me all this fresh revelation, all this fresh power was coming. Hallelujah. And so he reminded me this morning, listen, that as Peter is talking to us in 1 Peter chapter 4, he's writing in light of what's happening socially. Listen to this carefully. Today I am preaching to you. Today I am preaching to you. And what is happening in our world? Right now there's a war going on in Ukraine. Right now the politics are out of control in this world. Right now there's so many, there's so much divisiveness in the churches and in our culture because people want to be Republican, conservative, or people want to be crazy Democrats, whatever it is. And then there's so much going on in our world. So Peter writes this letter to us in the light of what's happening in his world. What was happening when he wrote this letter? Nero was the Caesar of Rome at the time. And Nero hated the Christians. And so he was persecuting Christians and dipping them in wax and lighting them on fire. They were the candlesticks that lit the way to his garden in the evening time. He would feed Christians to the lions in the Roman games. Has everyone seen that movie Gladiator? Everyone saw that movie Gladiator? With Russell Crowe, remember that movie Gladiator? When he's fighting the he's fighting the other soldier and the lions come out of the bottom of the of the stadium and eat the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what Nero was doing during his time. Now, as Peter writes this letter, he reminds us, he says, listen, persecution and challenging times are coming and are here for everybody. So as he writes this letter to us, he's writing it through the lens of persecution at the time. Oh, hallelujah. He talks to us about this. He talks to us about faithfully living for God. Faithfully living for God in the midst of difficult times. In the midst of political unrest. In the midst of wars that are going on. Jesus said, watch for the end times. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And all these things must happen. Oh, hallelujah. We see this now as we read it through the lens of our own experience. Which means that we have to take every word as uh, as as the weight of glory which means that the words have power and the words are heavy hallelujah look at your neighbor this morning and say neighbor, neighbor. wake up neighbor wake up neighbor wake this up, is going to be good this is going to be good hallelujah this is gonna be good. yeah 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 first peter chapter four when you're there say amen. amen let's pray father we thank you this morning lord god for this word because this is a word of power this is an on-time word for your people. Lord, show us, Lord, how to have the mind of Christ, how to have the same attitude as Jesus, how to think like God, be like God, and act like God, Lord God, and be filled with God at the same time. And so, Lord, we give you praise this morning. Bless the reading of your word in Jesus' name. All God's people say? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I want you to hear something real quick before we start. Have you noticed... Have you noticed that the more you come to church, the more friction your friends give you? Come on, somebody, say amen. 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 The more you come to church, the more you're around the church, the more you sing God's praises, the more you're in your word, the more friction you get from your family and from your friends. Why is that, church? Let me ask you a question. Why is that this morning? Because let me just say it like this. They need Jesus. Because the light in you reveals the darkness in them. Yep. Come on, somebody. Listen That's to what right. I said. The light in you. What's your name, ma'am? Veronica. Veronica. The light in you, Veronica, reveals the darkness in them. 
and the light shines the brightest where there is the most darkness. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The light in you reveals the darkness in them. Oh, this is powerful. As we read this word, I want you to watch. Read As we read this word, listen through the lens of that verse right there. Through the lens of what I just said, how the light in you reveals the darkness in them. Let's read it. Peter, in chapter 4, says this. He says, therefore, since Christ has suffered for us in his body, arm yourselves also with the same mind or let this mind be in you also have the same attitude have the same mentality have the same thinking have the same thought process as jesus arm yourselves oh what does it mean to arm yourself in the old west in the old west in dodge city when somebody was doing something wrong the sheriff would come and the sheriff would pull his gun and say, reach for the sky. The guy who was causing the trouble would say like this. He'd put his hands up and he'd say, don't shoot, I'm not armed. Don't shoot, I'm not armed. I think it was Wyatt Earp who said, well, then you better go arm yourself. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Oh, yeah, don't you come to a, a gunfight with a, a gun with no bullets in it. Come on, somebody. You got to arm yourself. You got to arm yourself with the things of God. You got to arm yourself with the armor of God. You got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Come on, you got to put on the helmet of salvation. You got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You need the spirit of God, which is the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Come on, somebody say amen to that. You got to arm yourself. With the mind of Christ. Arm yourself with the things of God. Arm yourself with the word. Let the church say amen. amen. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same mind, with the same attitude, with the same thinking. Because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now listen to me carefully. This is heavy. Because the word in the Greek, listen, when we go driving down the neighborhood and we come to a corner, there's a stop sign there. What does the red stop sign say? Stop. If you go to Greece and you go down their neighborhood and you come to the corner where you need to stop, the word is in the Greek, pow o Pow, P-O-W with an O at the end. How many of you know that when your kids are acting bad, you want to give them the pow-pows? <laughs> huh? You want to give them the pow-pow. Don't, don't, don't you act up. You're going to get the pow-pows. Come on, somebody. Amen. So the word in the Greek means to stop or to cease. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Pow-o mean, in the Greek means to cease or desist. To restrain a thing or person from something. To cease or to leave off. But it also means to get released from, to get released from something, amen? To have release from sin or to no longer be stirred by sins, incitements, and sins, seductions. So watch what Peter writes here. Look what he says. He says, because he who has suffered in his body has stopped or has done or has power against sin. That means you have been released from the enticement of sin when you have suffered in your body let the church say amen. amen oh do you don't realize how powerful this is church because jesus died for your sins he died for your desires he died for those desires that you have in your flesh he died for those things amen so you wouldn't have to be bound by those things anymore let the church say amen to that Ooh, hallelujah hallelujah verse number three for you have spent uh, verse number two as a result he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires. Why? He's been set free from it. But rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans and unbelievers chose to do. Living in debauchery. Living in sinfulness. Living in lust. Living in drunkenness. Living in orgies. Living in carousing and detestable idolatry. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> how, many of you, how many of you realize, come on, when you were out there on the streets, 
There was a time that you were tipping and dipping. Come on, somebody. There was a time that you were hiding and sliding. Come on, somebody. There was a time that you were peeping and creeping. Come on, somebody. There was a time that you were tweaking and peeking. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. We all we were out there. We were doing it, man. And this is what Peter said. Peter, Peter was saying this. Listen, listen. We were bound by those things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, brother, wait till I'm done. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. We were bound by those things. We were bound by that alcohol. We were bound by that seduction. We were bound by that prostitution. We were bound by that pooky dope pipe. Come on, somebody. We were bound by all that stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. But now that you've suffered in your body with Christ, hallelujah, he has set you free from it. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Say it out loud. I am no longer bound by my sin. I am free in Christ. And I have the Lord Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering today. Give him a clap offering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this, what it says in verse number four. Your friends that you used to tip and dip with, your friends that you used to hide and slide with, your friends that you used to peep and creep with, they think it's strange that you do not plunge or dive in with them into the same flood of dissipation, the same flood of sinfulness. Come on, how many of you, when you got Jesus and you realized you were doing wrong, when the boys came around and said, come on, we're going to go over here and hide and slide. Come on, somebody. We're going to go over here and do the dang thing. Come on, somebody. And you looked at them and you said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know that's what we used to do, but that's the old man. I don't do that. I'm a new man. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, the new has come. Let the church say amen. 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 Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your heart and say, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch what he says here. Those friends of yours think it's strange that you do not go back to doing the same old stuff with them anymore. And they start to heap abuse on you because you don't do those things with them. How many of you got the, the got your friends telling you, oh yeah, you go to that pastor's house now, you're a goody two shoe. Oh yeah, you go to that church over there at the Tahoe Motel, and now, oh, now all of a sudden you don't want to hang out with us anymore. Oh, yeah, you go over there, oh, you sing those church songs now, and now you're not singing uh, 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 that Marvin Gaye song. What was that, Marvin Gaye? <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> ah, come on, somebody. Sexual yeah, yeah. Now you're not singing that sexual healing or let's get it on anymore. Now you want to be singing the church song. So now what are they doing? They're abusing you. Amen. Because you want to live right. Because you want to be right. Because you want to do right. Because you want to talk right. Because you want to act right for the Lord. Let the church say amen. 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 Ooh, yeah, yeah. But say it one more time. The light in me, light in me. reveals the darkness in them. Ah, the oh, what's your name, sir? Lawrence. Huh? Lawrence. Lawrence? Brendan Barnes. Brendan Barnes? Yeah. Brendan, right? Brendan's the first name? Yes, sir. Brendan, hey, amen. Brendan, I, I know, listen, I know, Brendan, that you got around some old folks, come on now, and, and you were telling them about the Lord, and they're like, man, we don't want to hear that stuff. We want to talk about getting high, and where are we going to get the next girl, and where are we going to get the next deal, and where are we going to do all this, this stuff? Amen. And here's what happens. It's the light in you that reveals the darkness in them. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, yeah, amen. yeah, yeah. But verse number five says, Peter's writing, he says, but they, your friends, will have to give an account to him, God, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached on the corner of 4th Street and 6th Street at the Tahoe Motel, that even those who are now dead... To those who are now dead, that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Let the church say amen. 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 There's an old song that says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved a wretch like me. say something to you church and I want you to hear me carefully you're no longer the old person you used to be you are a new creation in Christ Jesus you're no longer blind but now you see amen it's the grace that saved a, saved a wretch like you and me hallelujah do you know what Christianity is let me tell you what Christianity is Christianity is very simple it is one beggar Telling the other beggars where to go find the bread. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Christianity is one beggar telling the other beggars where to go find the bread. Let the church say amen. amen. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. Verse number seven. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded. What did we say at the beginning? Arm yourself with the mind of Christ. But now he says, be clear-minded. Watch this. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Oh, what does this mean? What does it mean when we pray? Who are we talking to when we pray? My hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you got the hotline. Don't you remember Bruce Wayne? Do you remember Bruce Wayne had a red phone on his desk? And when the red phone would ring, it would light up and it would ring and it would be brr, 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 brr. And he'd say, you pick up the phone and who was it on the other line? Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon. Gordon. Come on, somebody. Commissioner, yes. Yes, Commissioner. Right? Listen, that's what God does with you. You begin to pray and the hotline rings on his desk. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. When you talk to God, he listens. Listen to this. When you pray, you're talking to the Lord and he listens. When you read, he's talking to you and you've got to listen. Woo, this is the conversation that we have with God. You pray and then you read. You ask and you receive. Come on, this is how you uh, commune with God. When you pray, he hears you. When you read, you've got to hear him. Come on, church, say amen to that. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. yeah, yeah, yeah. The end of all things is near, thank God. Therefore, be clear-minded. Be intelligent. Listen to this. You have to have the mind of Christ to be intelligent, to be clear-minded and self-controlled so you can pray. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so you can pray. And above all this, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Let the church say amen. Amen. All right, now let me let me put on my teacher hat just for a minute. Let me put on my teacher hat just for a minute. Bear with me, bear with me. The word Peter uses here is a very powerful word. It's the word agape. It's the word for love. And the agape love of Christ is the love of no condition. It's the love of favor and the love of decision. Amen. It's not like a man the way a man loves a woman where as long as he's acting right, she loves him. But the minute he messes up, she puts him out. Come on, somebody. That's not love. That's not God's kind of love. The agape love of Christ is that God has decided to love you whether you're a sinner, whether you're saved, whether you're right, whether you're wrong, whether you do things good, whether you do things bad. God chose to love you. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, my God. This is the love of no condition. <laughs> Where God says, it's not about what you do, it's about what I've done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, God. It's not about what you do, it's about what I've done. And I've chosen, I've made my decision, I've decided to love you, no matter what you do, no matter how you are. Now, let me say one thing, let me qualify what I'm saying here. Love is not what saves you and me. Grace is what saves you and me. God's right. unconditional favor. God loves us, but if you don't make a decision to receive his grace, you can still go right to hell. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Amen. But you've got to accept him by faith, accept the grace he's extended to you so you can be saved. Now watch this. 
Peter is writing this story that we're reading today, this letter. But what happened to Peter when Jesus got arrested? Yeah, Jesus was the first one. He, Jesus said this. Uh, Peter said this. Jesus, Jesus, if you get arrested and you get killed, or you, they, they take you captive, he says, then I'll be right there with you. I'm going to ride or die with you. Come on, somebody. Anybody got some ride or die friends out here? Come on, amen. Watch this. Peter says, I'm going to ride or die with you. I'm a, I'm, a rider from, I'm a rider from the south sider. Come on, somebody. Watch this. But the minute Jesus got arrested, where did Peter go? He ran the other way. So when people came to Peter and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're from Galilee too. You were with that preacher who just got arrested. Peter says, I don't know the man. How many times did Peter deny him? Three times. When Jesus came back from the dead, when came back from, got raised, got resurrected, the first thing he says, I want to know, I want everyone to know that I'm back and tell me where the heck is Peter? Why? Watch this now. He goes to get Peter and this is the first thing he says to Peter. Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me? Peter says, no, Lord. I phileo you. We get the city of brotherly love is called what? Philadelphia, right? That's brotherly love. Peter says, yes, Lord, I phileo you. He says, not that's not what I asked you. Phileo is the, the love of condition. If you do this, then I'll love you back as a brother. If you do this, that's the love of, of, of brotherhood. He says, do you agape me? Do you love me, Peter, the way I love you? He says, yes, Lord, I phileo you. He says, that's not what I'm asking you. He says, let me ask you one last time. Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally? Will you love me no matter what happens? Peter says, yes, Lord, I agape you. Watch this. Now watch this is heavy. The Bible, as we just read, said that love covers over a multitude of sins. Real love, when you have the mind of Christ, when you think like Jesus, when you love like Jesus, when you live like Jesus and you have the spirit of Jesus in you, then you will have to love like Jesus. This is the love of decision where you choose to love somebody no matter how they are, no matter how they act, no matter what they do, you choose to love them. Yes, people are going to disappoint you. Yes, people are going to let you down, but you've got to choose to love them. Come on, let the church say amen to that. Amen. Watch what he says here. The word... The word for covers over, love covers over a multitude of sins, is the word calypto, where we get the name, what's it called when we have a thing in the sky? Eclipse. eclipse. What does the eclipse do? It's the, the moon covering over the sun, right? So watch this. We get the word calypto, means to cover over. Jesus said this, nobody lights a lamp and then, put, uh, then pu puts it under a basket. Nobody lights a lamp and then put it, puts it under a basket or hides it under a bed. No, they put it on the lampstand so the light will shine and fill the whole room. So love covers over something completely or conceals it. He says, above all else, love each other deeply because love conceals other people's sins. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh my God, amen. church. Do yes, you realize, do you realize what Peter is challenging us to do today? He's challenging us to love like Jesus, to have the mind of Christ, to love like Jesus, to live like Jesus, to love people the way Jesus loved people, to sacrifice yourself for what God wants for you. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh my God. Why? Because the world is a world of condition. If you treat them good, they'll treat you good. If you do this for them, they'll do this for them. In fact, they say it like this, Greg. If you scratch my back, I'll... Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Hallelujah. Amen. So watch what happens here. Peter's, Peter's calling us to rise above our circumstance, to rise above what the world is doing, to rise above the way the world does things, and for us to do things the way Christ does it. Let the church say amen. amen. Watch what he says here. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without complaining and without division. 
each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering Amen. God's grace in all its various one, forms. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 11. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. As a believer, As a believer I've got to keep my conduct, keep my conduct above criticism. Above criticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I promise right now to love you better than I have in the past. Now look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, I promise you right now to love you better than I have in the past. Because now I know better. Ah, oh, what did I say at the beginning? You can't do better until you know better. Give the Lord a hand clap of offering. Come on, hallelujah. Everybody stand up right where you are. Everybody stand. Come on, get up, boy. Oh, Jesus. Now you're asking me. Oh, Jesus. That's the only way I got up. Next week, next Sunday, we're going to conclude our study through 1 Peter. And he's going to talk about how for us to be leaders within the church group. Do you realize that each one of you is a leader? Each one of you has a circle of influence. Now, let me ask you a question. God has called you to affect your circle of influence. But when you're weak in your leadership, you allow people to infect you with their ideas. We brought my dog home from Riverside and she had a flea on her. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, listen, listen. We had a dog, we brought our dog home from Riverside and she had a flea on her. So I could have done nothing and let the fleas take over the house. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Amen. Amen. But how many of you know, as a leader, I said, you better get in that water, little girl. Come on, go. Let's get the scrubber. Let's get the, the, the flea spray. Let's get the flea bath, show, shampoo, and we scrub that dog up, right? So I became the effector of her cleanliness. But if I wouldn't have done nothing, she could have infected me with her fleas. There's an old saying in the world that when you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Ah, don't let them give you fleas, Mercedes. Don't let them give you fleas, Mercedes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And vice versa, vice versa. <laughs> All right, everybody standing over there on the side, come on over here. Let's let's close with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering as we close. That was great. Thank you. I like that. Thank you.